Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for me to present this talk in a completely new format. So I wish you a good entertainment uh, by uh, looking at my thoughts about engineering education and how we meet the engineering profession's need in our departments of engineering at the universities. However, I would like to discuss all these items uh, I present here uh, in the upcoming event in London and I'm really looking forward to meeting you there. So what is the outline of my talk? I first of all would like to address the issues of responsibility of our universities reflecting the professional needs and the societal needs uh, in our countries here in Europe. I think we have to cope with the metamorphosis of departments and also metamorphosis of our study programs and also with the metamorphosis of the younger generation where we need new contact points to address them in order to bring them adequately into engineering professions. And for this we need a whole series of new processes. So what is the knowledge transfer that happens at our universities? The task in our universities is that we transfer the knowledge which we acquire in science to society. How do we do this? We do it via the graduates and their knowledge and skills and competences. We do it by executive education for professionals, but also, of course, we do this by collaborations with local and international industry. So the collaboration with industry are certainly the best stimuli for new content. No, no, that would not be enough. We really have to be aware that the core disciplines according which we are arranged in the universities might create unwanted delimiters between the disciplines. And we have to continuously decide whether we need new core disciplines, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, whether we have to add new disciplines to them in order to cope with the requirements of our society. So in order to understand this, we should be aware that knowledge emerges in various manners. It can emerge in a very well-structured manner, straightforward. This is often done in the research and development departments of also industrial partners. It can also emerge in a random and unpredictable way, creating surprises to society. And it also can emerge by combining various classical disciplines where new perspectives might arise. And what do you mean with at random and combining? Excellent question. Just think about the fact that fundamental research often led to results that were applicable to societal developments decades later. Just think about the finite element method, which was elaborated decades uh, before it was first applied uh, in the Boeing departments for the calculation for aircraft uh, structures. Also, think about the fact that information technology uh, has a strong impact on mobility issues in our societies and that there new formats arise which we couldn't dream about uh, some decades ago. Well, and I think we have to cope regarding these issues that we always have to find profiles for visible and invisible future challenges and we also have to find a proactive creativity at our universities. Wow, that sounds great. What do you mean with new profiles? Well, there are numerous examples. I just would like to state out of my own discipline the computational engineering issues, which are new profiles which were created in the overlapping regions between computer sciences and the classical engineering sciences. But also think about games engineering or a very general profile engineering science, not linked to a specific application issue like mechanical engineering or electrical engineering or civil engineering or also think about new disciplines science and technology studies at the intersection of social sciences and engineering sciences. So we have a whole variety of new topics which are created in the overlapping region of our disciplines. At the universities we are well advised to support the creativity and to provide appropriate playgrounds, also to support startups, by the way, but to find new formats in order to bring people together. I have here a list of a whole bundle of formats, which is, of course, not complete, where at the student's level or also at the level of the PhD candidates, the cooperation is fostered. All this, by the way, is very much linked and reminds me 
of Humboldt's ideas for a university structure, the physical co-presence of different generations and the idea of uniting the teaching and the research activities in universities. So the professors who are inspired by the enthusiasm and also the curiosity of the students and the students who are inspired by the excellence of great researchers. This only works with an appointment policy that is not based on consensus but really on productive resistance. It is also fostered, of course, by autonomous universities who are free in order to define their topics and who have strong departments who bring in their expertise in order to establish new formats of teaching and also new contents for their programs. And of course, we have to encourage the interfacultative communication at all levels at our universities in order to follow up this idea. Strong departments sounds very theoretical. Couldn't you give an example? Well, thank you very much for this great question. And this gives me the chance to talk a little about my own department, the Department of Civil, Geo and Environmental Engineering at the Technical University in Munich. So the first step in order to discuss the future development of our study programs is to make clear what is our guiding principle. This guiding principle, construction, infrastructure, environment, planet Earth, so dealing with the planet Earth on different scales and dealing with the built environment on different scale uh, serves as a touchstone for strategic decisions. The next issue one has to talk about is what profiles do we want to create among our students. So we have the challenge to transform young persons into engineers and how do we steer these transformations. And for this it is important not to go on a too precise, discrete level, but to talk about a general picture of uh, the persons we want to create. Planners, designers and operators for the built environment, innovators and integrators of ideas and technologies, managers of risk and uncertainties, not just by natural events, but also by other threats and also by uncertainties of our model predictions. And we also want to create the leaders in dis discussions and decisions in order to shape public and environmental infrastructure processes. So these ideas, of course, have to be the basis for the discussions how we develop the departments into the future. And there I think we should be very well aware of what is the content of our programs in general. And in civil engineering, for example, it is the translation of a whole variety of sciences into the issues of the built environment. And this the range is from natural sciences of all kinds over humanities, but also to economic sciences. And we translate it in order to cope with the societal expectations for the future engineers in our disciplines. And as the knowledge and the disciplines grow, also, the disciplines in our departments have to grow in order to cope with the challenges. And here you see a picture of the development of our department since 1868, when the Technical University of Munich was founded, up to approximately now. And you see that in uh, the last 10 to 15 years, a whole number of new chairs arose in order to cope with the increasing challenges of our disciplines. Oh my goodness, how shall we learn all about this? Well, this is a challenge indeed. Our Stone Age brain unfortunately did not develop as quickly as science. And so we are well advised to continuously discuss how to sort the contents of our topics in order to cope with these requirements. If you would follow all our topics, which we think are relevant for the societal progress, then you would have approximately a workload of 3,000 credits equally 50 years of study, so neither our brains grew adequately nor our lifetime grew adequately, so we have to find a way out of this. Well, that's nice. Each professor can tailor his individual master's program. No, no, that is not really the criteria. We shouldn't do this. We need strong departments in order to arrange this. Otherwise, strange things would happen. If we just would look how the chairs cope with the requirements of society and also would make a comparison of where a university has its unique selling points, we would get a list of programs which we, by the way, uh, got when we uh, 
established the Bologna process in many countries, which is really counterproductive. And you see here just the number of programs which arose out of our universities in civil engineering. So what we actually have to do, we have to discuss where we really can arrange knowledge in a way for society. And there it is very helpful to look at the interfacultative cooperations between the different chairs. It is also very helpful to look into the interfacultative networks between the individual chairs of a department with other departments. And thirdly, it is very important to decide according to which criteria do you sort the contents. Do you sort the contents according to the immediate societal needs? Or do you rather sort the contents according to the skills and the competences necessary to cope with future societal needs? So on a more abstract level, which I think is the better way to do the thing. When should be new study programs initiated by the departments? First of all, I think we should continuously explore our classical disciplines and in exceptional cases, we can decide that the expansion of our classical disciplines is such that a new study program is worthwhile to be created inside this classical discipline. It is simpler to decide on a new study program if we realize that our students should be prepared with cross-cutting competences that link to other disciplines and industrial sectors, and thus a new format which is overarching various disciplines should be created. And last but not least, it can be worthwhile to create new study programs if unique features in the department can attract the best international students and that we then can tailor programs for specific worldwide challenges. However, we should be well aware that not each attractive title is a justification for a new study program. Often titles are not sustainable. Who would like to have the title engineer for a car optimized city uh, on his business card? Everybody would say, well, this master's program was created in a time where one optimized cities to the car traffic. Today, we have other optimization criteria for European cities. So it is much wiser to have the title civil engineer on the business card. But do you still think civil engineering is sexy? Well, your question shows to me that we really have to deal with the metamorphosis of the younger generation. We really need new contact points to talk with you, apparently. And of course, you can blame us that uh, civil engineering or engineering in general still in Germany has a rather male image and therefore it might be not so really attractive for many of you. So what do we do with that? Of course, we do lots of efforts. We go to schools starting to address the young generation and to inform them about the technical contents of our study programs and the perspectives of a profession in this field. We then have to find the right contact points to you to bring you into our study programs. So you come with very precise ideas or probably with very weird ideas. You probably have the notion that you want to do something good for environment. Or you probably already know, I want to be an engineer working and surveying for society. So we capture the ideas to our study programs. And it was really impressive how some 10 years ago when we installed the environmental engineering at our university, how the number of students grew. You see here the students of civil engineering at our university and then you see that just bringing in the environmental engineering as a new topic into our university, how the number of the students continuously grew uh, currently environmental engineers and civil engineers in such a range, just by making it a topic visible, which in many aspects was treated prior to that by civil engineers. So then we try in the bachelors to help you to discover your talents, your interests, we give you advice. And I really would like to encourage you, dear students, that you then work on your personality development on acquiring of knowledge, skills and competences and the orientation on sustainable professional profiles, you have to develop as an engineer later, which then in his the master's programs can focus on his talent and on his enthusiasm, depending on where your fascination is located. So the profiles which I just showed before are also profiles in the sense of different types of persons covering different areas of topics. This sounds very bloomy and theoretical, but how do you know if it works? 
That is an excellent question. Of course, there is a strong need of a good communication with the students about a clear outcome. We have to provide transparency and clear goals for that, what we do, what we expect and what you get. So we have to compare the outcome descriptors of the different contents, our expectations and your sensation about that and thus optimize our study programs. After checking the competencies in individual modules, it is important also to check the matching of the various modules of a study program. That means that the competencies acquired, for example, in a module treating the fundamentals in civil engineering will serve as a basis for subsequent modules which are probably more application-oriented in the different topics of civil engineering. So in order to make this visible, a database can be created which addresses each individual contact points between various modules of the study programs, which also helps the students to understand the structure of the program. Well, and a large issue to be checked is the alumni survey, which should be done regularly in order to see whether the contents of the study programs really match with the expectations of the professional life and also which show whether the students will earn their money adequately for their competencies acquired in the study programs. It seems everything is done inside the university and you do not talk to stakeholders from the praxis. Well, also this is an excellent question. Of course we do. We talk with the stakeholders of this uh, of practice but we talk with them in a well stru structured way and uh, we analyze the comments in order to develop our programs. I think it is important to make clear that we have to make a distinction in the context between the things that are absolutely necessary to be integrated in the university programs because they cannot be learned in an autodidactical way or by the training on the job later on. I think it is also important to make clear that a university cannot compensate for all deficiencies of previous educational steps so that we have to base our work on a certain basis and that we have to find other formats to prepare for the entry into our system if this basis is not available. And uh, we also have to find the issues that can be better integrated into the training on the job. And for this, we really should make a clear conversation with the stakeholders in practice. We sense that the stakeholders, as the students, are often very impatient concerning quick practical applications which we think that to a large extent can be better integrated into the training on the job for university uh, professions in order to have sustainable competences for a lifelong time. And the university also helps for learning how to learn in order to adapt oneself in the future for the future challenges. We have in civil engineering here a great format, uh, which is the RSBAU, where stakeholders from all type of practice and university colleagues are together in order to establish ideas for the curriculum for civil engineering. And we have in Bavaria also an interface to the industry by the discussion of a cooperative trainee program where the competences which we want to train on the job are addressed. When designing new study programs, we nevertheless shouldn't forget that apart from the core disciplines, we also should have a view on topics which are not comprised in the core disciplines because they are linked to various disciplines in a cross-cutting manner. So in this field, we should be aware that especially in engineering sciences, new topics arise linked with uh, social sciences and also political sciences and should be addressed with adequate study programs. Therefore, in Munich, we created the Munich Center for Technology in Society, where a merging of the different fields of our university takes place, and also our engineers are trained to be able to evaluate normative aspects, social aspects, political aspects in engineering sciences. This leads, at the end, to a vision of an engineering society where the engineers manage to merge different viewpoints coming from engineering science, natural science, social science, but also economy and, of course, also a practical view on the topics of engineering. Well, let me summarize. I'm looking forward to the discussion about the following contents. First of all, I think it is clear that new contents 
continuously require new sorting and the challenge is how to integrate this in the existing study programs. Furthermore, I think we should be aware that our core disciplines might create unwanted delimiters. And there is a continuous question arising whether new core disciplines are necessary or whether these delimiters can be overcome by new interdisciplinary formats. Thirdly, I think in order to establish those interdisciplinary formats, we should be aware of which interdisciplinary competences are necessary for our graduates. For this, I think it's very wise to analyze the current deficiencies of our current professionals and to understand where those deficiencies should be reduced and can be reduced in study programs. I think for this we need at all levels, at the students and the professorial levels, creativity and lateral thinking. And I think we should be very aware that the bachelor master systems on one hand side offers new options, on other hand side we should be very cautious when applying those options in order to have sustainable long-lasting formats. And as a last point I would like to discuss with you is that we really should be aware of the interfaces for the intake and also for the outcome of our programs. Intake in the discussion with the schools and outcome also in the discussion with the stakeholders from practice. Looking at all those issues we should be well aware that the proactive attitude has to dominate the process and the trigger should be intrinsically coming from the universities because we know very well which results of our research can have a positive impact on society. And for this we also should better communicate as universities what is the role of our graduates and finally what engineers do in our society. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to the discussion.